Hello! In this episode of Bug Bounty Reports Explained, I will show you an incredible puzzle of low-risk bugs that chained together led to an account takeover on Facebook.com. The hunter who found it, Yusef Sumuda, got almost $45,000 for it. Link to his blog post is in the description. Enjoy! This episode is sponsored by Integrity. Integrity is Europe's biggest bug bounty platform with over 400 programs to hack on. I hugely appreciate Integrity for investing a lot in community enablement. They create an awesome bug bites newsletter, they create monthly XSS challenges, they even have a great YouTube channel. If you are not one of over 50,000 hunters, check out Integrity now using the link from the description. On Facebook, you can log in using your password, but you can also link your account with Gmail to log in with your Gmail account. The protocol to do this is off and is widely used across the web. Very simplified flow of this process looks like this. You are on Facebook and you click Login with Gmail button. Facebook generates some parameters for you and redirects you to Gmail. Then in Gmail, you have to log in. But usually you are logged in already, so we only choose the account and if you only have one account, Gmail will just flash in front of you and you will be redirected back to Facebook. The parameters, among others, will contain the code. Importantly, up until now, Facebook and Gmail servers did not communicate with each other. Only now, when Facebook receives the code, sends the request to Gmail server and gives you back the session token if it's okay. So this code is very valuable because it allows you to exchange it for the session cookie. So if the attacker would see it, they could also take over your account. And across the years, we saw many attacks that looked more or less like this. The attacker has to trick the victim into visiting their website. The attacker's website sends the victim into the authentication flow, but before the original website consumes the code, the attacker takes it over and hijacks user's account. And this is exactly what we'll try to do today. However, in modern web and on hardened target like Facebook, it is not easy, definitely much harder than in the early days of OAuth. In particular, there are two problems that we need to solve. The first one is that the code is one-time use only. It means if the victim consumes the code, sends this code to Facebook, the attacker can't do anything even if they have the code. And the other is, of course, leaking the code somehow. So to prevent the code from being used by the victim, we need to stop this flow somewhere between Gmail or Facebook. On Facebook, if you make too many requests, your account will enter a state where you need to fill in the CAPTCHA. I would call it the CAPTCHA state. Whatever you will try to do on Facebook, you will be shown this window. And it is a very good candidate to solve the first problem because if the victim's account will be in the lockout state, in the CAPTCHA state, after they finish the authentication flow, they won't use the code and importantly, the code will be in the URL of the website, giving us some chance to leak it. But how do we force victims' account into the CAPTCHA state? The answer to that is that we don't. Instead, we'll introduce the CAPTCHA state into our own account and then we'll use two bugs to log out the victim from their account using one CSRF and then logging the victim into our account using another CSRF. These two bugs, even though they are very low risk by themselves, chained together here, will allow us to move the victim's Facebook into the CAPTCHA state. Now, you might be asking yourself, how do we take over victim's account if they are logged in to our account? But the thing is that in case of this attack, Facebook won't actually take part in this process. We are interested in Gmail generating the code and taking over this code, which will allow us to take over the account. So it doesn't matter what account is the victim logged in on facebook.com. 
So we are able to log out the victim from their account, logging them to our account, which is in the captcha state. We can send them into the authentication flow and we'll make sure that they come back to Facebook, they don't consume the code and the code is in the URL. Now the question is, how to leak this code from this URL? Normally, if you want to add a CAPTCHA functionality from a third-party provider to your website, you have to import their scripts on your website. It requires some level of trust. And to be even more secure, Facebook didn't host this window, this iframe, on facebook.com domain, but on their sandbox domain. Sandbox domains often improve security of websites because even though Facebook owns these two domains, browsers don't know about it and they treat them like they would be completely different ones. They have different cookies, different storage, different everything. They just have one communication channel to establish if the captcha was filled in or not. But for the sandbox to be an improvement of security of the website, it can't be used in too many contexts. But in this case, it was, because it was also used on a testing websites when the developers can see how a particular website will see inside the Facebook mobile app. And this allowed them to upload HTML files, which would be stored on the same sandbox domain. And even though the sandbox domain is separate from facebook.com, the sandbox domains can somehow communicate with each other because they are the same origin. And this is the last piece of our puzzle. Now let's combine them all together to see the whole exploit. Usually in case of a client side attack, you create your own website and you have to trick the victim into visiting, for example, attacker.com domain. In this case, we'll instead host the whole exploit on the Facebook sandbox domain because it will be helpful later. Before we attack the victim, we have to force our account in the CAPTCHA state. Then, when the victim visits our exploit, first we have to log them out from their account using a CSRF. Then we have to log them into our account using another CSRF. Then we have this URL. Importantly, we open this in a new tab and we save the reference to that window. If the victim is already logged in in Gmail, Gmail just flashes in front of them and redirects back to Facebook. Facebook is in the CAPTCHA state, which means they land on the CAPTCHA screen. And importantly, the URL with the code is inside the iframes address. Now, from the original window, we have the reference to the newly opened window. These two are now in separate domains because our website is on the sandbox domain and the victim is now on the facebook.com domain. So we only have limited access to properties from facebook.com. However, those limited properties include the list of iframes on that website. And we know that the first iframe, the iframe of index zero, is the CAPTCHA window, which is also on the sandbox domain. And all of a sudden, our exploit website and the iframe with the sensitive code in the address are on the same origin, meaning they can communicate with each other. And our exploit website has access to the address of the iframe, which contains the code. We now send the code to our server and we need a script to exchange this code for a victim session cookie taking over their account. So the bug allowed to take over any Facebook account of someone that uses Gmail to log in. The reward for it was almost $45,000. Of course, the bug is already fixed. Check out this playlist to see two more account takeovers on Facebook that were rewarded $25,000 and $55,000. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. For now, thank you for watching and goodbye.